standby. I think, I think we're live. I'm pretty sure. Rumor yeah, has it. You think so? I think so. Yeah, I see it here. All right. Ryan, welcome to the show. Okay, let's go. Everyone, woo! Happy Monday. <laughs> this is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. All right. So I just have to say that wherever you're watching from, I always like to say hello. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Wherever you're watching from, welcome to Jake Sussman Live, another episode. I still don't have a name for this yet, but we're gonna get there. Um, so look, since quarantine started, I have been interviewing some of the coolest people from around the world that are passionate in the world of dyslexia and ADHD. I've been interviewing many successful entrepreneurs, neuroscientists, teachers, advocates, moms, and people like you. But today, I have someone very special. Actually, Ryan is part of Superpower Consulting, which is our mentorship firm that's designed to help our kids with dyslexia and ADHD build self-confidence with how they learn through their very own mentor, like Ryan and myself. So Ryan, welcome, okay? Thank you for having me. We have moms watching this from around the world, okay? Hi moms. Please let us know, hi moms, yes, hello. This is gonna be really cool for you moms watching because I want you to imagine Ryan, like the older version of your child. You're gonna see what I mean very soon when you start to hear Ryan's story. So Ryan, without further ado, the floor is yours. Tell me about, tell me about your story. I wanna know, before we get into the whole thing, what was it like when you first found out you had ADHD? I mean, to my parents, it was no surprise. <laughs> I've, you know, I've been loads of energy since I was, so young and that's something that I've you know that, that's that been no secret to anybody that, I, that knows me um, I was diagnosed when I was I think six years old and um, I was I was put on medication right off the bat and there was there was definitely a difference in how I acted based on when I was medicated and when I wasn't and that's still true to this day you know I could hang out with my friends and my friends will know if I'm medicated or not but I've, through the medication, medicated or not, I've always had the same things that I've had to deal with and the things that I've had to grow with. And when I was diagnosed with ADHD, it was sort of just a point in my life where I realized that it's just going to be a lifelong process of figuring out how to deal with this and how to live with this. And not just live with this, but thrive with this. Because it's, it's something that can bring me down and, you know, slow me down. But it's also something that can unleash things that nobody else can do. It, superpower what do, you, what do you what do you mean like the superpower what, what do you mean by that i mean when i i obviously uh you and i have always talked about a hyper focus when i get when i get interested in something when i get into something i can do it for hours and hours and hours and lose complete track of where i am and what i'm doing and what i'm supposed to be doing but it it allows me to get this this in-depth passion and interest in things and it allows me to dive into things with excitement and energy as opposed to just sitting in a classroom and being bored out of my mind because I'm not interested in doing algebra or calculus or whatever it is that we're doing. It, it allows me to go in with this excitement and this, this passion. And that's something that I didn't realize was a connection to my ADHD until very recently, you know, just in the past few years, even though I've had it for over 10 years now, or I've known I've had it for over 10 years now. It, it's, you know, I always just thought of it as like, oh, this is such a, a bother because I, I work slower and I get in trouble with some teachers. I, I used to get in a lot of trouble in middle school in particular because I would just be a ball of energy. And 
a lot of teachers didn't like that because they thought that I was going to make trouble and that I was going to, you know, going to ruin the class environment. When in reality, I just wanted to create a more excited and energetic class environment to help us right. get more passionate. You were just it. trying. You just wanted yeah. to just wanted to just fit in. And now tell me if this is you too, because when I was younger, I mean, we're on the same age, first of all. So, but when I was younger, making friends was really hard. Making friends was so hard. Like I would try to say things just to fit in and my, my, my friends just wouldn't understand. And it was so frustrating. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Was that you too? In some ways, yeah. Um, I, would, I would say that I went through a bunch of different phases with my friendships and my relationships with people in my class. I never really felt like I was understood by teachers or peers alike. Um, I, I've been lucky enough to have close friends that I've had with me throughout throughout my childhood. But what I've realized is that there, I've always had different struggles with with connecting with people, with getting relationships with people. For example, sometimes I will just come come across as overbearing and just too much energy, and people are like, "Get away! Like, calm down. It's seven a.m. I'm not ready for this energy." And that's something that I've had to learn and realize that not everybody can match my energy all the time and not people, not a lot of, like not everybody can accept that kind of energy and really work with that. And I've had to kind of take that and figure out how to, you know, twist my energy towards ways that are more palatable to other people. And that's, that's been a challenge. And I felt like I was never understood sometimes when I, when I was just being, you know, when people were like, Ryan, like calm down a little. Um, when I was younger. And that being said, in addition, I once I got into middle school, I, I started to realize that that was impacting some of my friendships and relationships, that that overbearing type of energy. And so I tried to f tried to play the game a little, you know, I tried to figure out how to make myself not like that. Try, I just tried to be like everyone else. I tried to fit in, which was the biggest mistake that I could, could have ever made. Uh, in trying to fit in, I got farther from myself than I'd ever gotten. And that was the total wrong move. And I did that because I thought that, that was my way in to, you know, being more. So what, what kind of advice then? So for our parents watching and welcome everyone, we have over 30 people watching this right now. Please let us know where you're watching from. If, when, if you're, if you're tuning in here um, and there is a little bit of a delay because we're streaming from zoom, but we're here to answer any of your questions. This is an opportunity for you to look into the future. If you were to ask your child something in the future, what would you want to know? Ryan is a senior in high school who I'm not going to speak for him, but he's getting into some pretty cool schools. And I am so pumped for him because you really worked hard. You worked hard and it wasn't always supposed to be like that, right? Now, if you don't mind, tell us, some of the schools that you've gotten into, if you don't mind, if that's okay. And sure, then yeah. let's go back. And what were you told that was that supposed to happen? Like in this, where you were, where you are now? No, uh, I mean, yeah. So just recently um, I got into Notre Dame Mendoza School of Business, Woo! as well yeah. as um, Georgetown's McDonough School of Business. Oh my, I have the chills. I actually, have the chills. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, and um, I just got into Richmond last Friday, and I'm going to be continuing to hear from more schools through the coming weeks and months. Give it up for Ryan. Give it up for Ryan. I want to see some hearts on here because this young man worked his butt off to make this happen, and you deserve it. You deserve it. Every single piece of recognition, Ryan. I mean, come on. That's awesome. So let's go back. Let's go back. Look at this. We're getting all the hearts right now. We're getting all the hearts right now. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Let's go back. What was it? What were you told it wasn't going to happen? I was definitely never told that it was going to happen. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, I was thankfully, God, it would have crushed me. I was never told you'll never be able to do this. You'll never eat. And I was never, so that, that was something I'm very grateful for the fact. And honestly, I'm, I'm lucky because that a lot of kids with LD haven't had that opportunity. You know, they've been put down, which is just 
terrible and completely wrong. It's wrong. Off, it's disgusting. Anybody tells any of your ki kids that they can't do anything, they're wrong. They can do anything. And superpower consulting, the whole goal of us is to show everybody that. And I, but I have been like, you know, there have been wait times when I've doubted myself because of the way that I've been treated in a classroom or something. I've been treated a little bit more as just like, you know, a problem student, not necessarily like an excelling student. And, um, you know, a, a student that they had to control, not just teach, you know, which, which is like- The behavioral uh, problem, was that you? What? Were you the behavioral problem? At times, yeah, yeah. Middle school, I started, I, I acted out, but like my acting out was not in bad faith. It was, it was all in just trying to bring energy. You know, I was, I was, I was my energy was just mis misunderstood, and I understand why it was because I was all over the place with my energy, as everybody with ADHD is when they're growing up. And I mean, I'm not gonna say that I'm not still all over the place. I'm, um, I mean, you can see my bed is a complete mess, um, but. <laughs> But what I've I've just had to continue to learn and grow and how to make myself a little bit more understandable, which is not easy at all, especially when you're going through a school where, you know, most people aren't dealing with the same things that you are and most teachers aren't. Um, and the school system isn't necessarily built to deal with the people that have this kind of stuff, um, which is upsetting and frustrating. But that's why we're here as I keep saying over and over again. Ryan, we have a question for you. Oh, yes, please. Okay. okay, this is from Angie. Hello, Angie. What advice do you have for an elementary school teacher? What do wish, sorry, I know. What do wish teachers have said? Well, what do you wish teachers have said slash done or what's an amazing teacher that stood out to you and why? This is an awesome, awesome question. I would say just find yeah. a kid's passion and develop it, encourage it, promote it, and make it as intellectual as possible because the, the whole art of learning is just to gain more knowledge, to look deeper and try to figure out more. And that's the, I think that it, people with ADHD are the most skilled at that if they're given the right opportunity and they're given the right encouragement. It, I remember my fourth grade teacher was amazing because she, she, she encouraged my interests and passions and she encouraged me to look deeper into them and to dive deeper and to embrace them as my own. I was a huge nerd. I, I read all of the Percy Jackson books. I was a huge Greek mythology nerd. I had like 12 books on Greek mythology. I knew every God. I knew every myth. I knew everything because I was just a total geek for it. And my fourth grade teacher loved that. She, she made it her goal to encourage that and promote that within me she would ask me about different things she would just have me like sit and talk to her about all these different things tell her all these things and then she was like Brian do you want to do you want to make a do you want to do a lesson for the class and I was like wow. yeah are you kidding and so I she had me do an entire presentation I made like a 50 slide PowerPoint presentation about all these Greek myths and was able to have it be given to the class. And she wow. still uses that presentation now, 10 years later, she still does that for all of her classes. That must have made you feel so good. And, I mean, and it kind it's, of it's, it's like we, and for the teachers and, and to add on to that question, I, I always think too that we will for like the content we learn is often, you know, I don't really remember the book that I read when I was in fourth grade, but I remember Mr. Cop. I remember Miss Buskey, Miss Gill. I could, I, I mean, the list, I could keep going. Miss Welshans, right? Yeah. Mr. Peters. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. Miss Humphreys, Miss Hanson, all the names we remember, we remember yeah. their names. I could name on uh, like off right now, like a few, like three or four defining moments within my childhood, within my school that completely made me, that completely motivated me and encouraged me to see what my limit was, see what I could do. Um, because there were so many people that would 
see me do something and then just instantly give me a, a lunch detention for it or like you know a, a behavioral write-up for for calling out in class but then there were a few teachers a very select few that saw something deeper with me you know they saw something in me or even if they didn't see something in me they made me feel like they did and that was that did all of the difference that that completely opened me up to thinking of the fact that I can do whatever I set myself set my mind to whatever I want to accomplish and it's those small things that can just completely transform how I look at all the things that I do it, it I remember um you know just feeling this sense of self-worth once I had different teachers you know empower me you know empowerment towards feeling like I'm capable it does all the difference yeah now, Tracy asked a question here. How do you deal with tests? I mean, like, really, like I, want, I want to know this too, because I'm not the best test taker. Um, Ryan's a tutor, by the way, and a mentor. We're going to yeah. get into how, what Ryan does and what, how he's a mentor, why he's a mentor, what is superpower consulting, but he's also a tutor. So this will be actually really good for our parents watching this. Tracy, thanks for asking that question. How do you deal with yeah. tests? What's the secret? That's an, oh my gosh, I could talk about this. This could take the entire interview itself, just talking okay. about tests. Okay. tests. This will be a separate thing. We'll, we'll make this a whole, how yeah. about, I have an idea. And let, me know, let me know what you all think watching. What if we had a Zoom call over we invite all of you onto Zoom and we'll have Ryan share tips on how he was able to conquer tests. Or yeah. we'll have some of our mentors come on talking about how they overcame this challenge in school. What If you guys think that's a good idea, let me know. Ryan, you got the floor. Okay. So I understand where you're coming from with that question. I am, I was the king of silly mistakes on tests and losing points that I just did not need to lose. I remember there was the, in third grade, there was this gifted program test where you took a test to try to get into a gifted program. And I didn't do that well the first time and I got my sheet back and it was because I missed bubbled. I missed bubbled like the, like the 12th question. So everything below that was off by one. So I got like all of them wrong. Silly things like that just completely slipped the mind of a kid with ADHD. And that, that kind of stuff happened to me all throughout elementary school, all throughout middle school and still happens to me throughout high school. But throughout high school, I've, I've continued to train myself towards doing these things, these particular things that made me, that make me honestly a very good test taker. Now, I won't say that I'm perfect. Everybody makes silly mistakes, but I find myself making fewer silly mistakes than the people without ADHD in my classes, which really feels so accomplishment, so meaningful to me, because I know that that's just through my own hard work and through my own diligence with figuring out what to do in the tricks. My my main things, I'll, I'll make it brief for now, but basically check your work, check your work, check your work. Mnemonic devices, you know, if you can't remember how to do something, think, oh, like, like I'll, I'll be doing a math question. I'll be like, oh, the cat walks over the H. What that means, only I know, but it helps me remember how to do a division or something like that. Wow. Those kind of things are what you need to kind of do those. And that's brilliant. And I, I've, I love to do that with my kids that I tutor. I, they'll, they'll be like, I can't remember this. And I'll be like, I'll just say something, something totally random that has a slight connection to what we're talking about. And I'll be like, are you ever going to forget that? And they're like, no. And then they don't. It, it's really cool how the memory, the, the memory can really jog itself by just connecting it to different weird things. And that's really great for ADHD people because like, I have just these little pockets of thoughts like all over that I can just grab from during a test because they're just put into these random things. Like I remember one test, I had to memorize all these things and I just connected each thing with a different animal. Why? Because I wanted to. And it, it, it was what helped me get through it. And now checking your work is a big thing in math and science classes in particular. Um, you have to make sure that you check over everything that you do. And what I've noticed is that what I've found is that the best way to do that in order to, because when you check over all your work, it takes time. And a lot of times there's not time to do that during a test. So what I've learned to do is when I do a question, let's say that there are like in physics, there are these long multi-step problems. 
whenever I do anything, before I go to the next part of the question, I check. I'm like, did I do something silly? Did I make a silly mistake here? No, next part. Did I make a silly mistake here? Next part. Because instead of then having to do the whole thing, then check my work, find a mistake in the first part and then redo it, I can just do my do the first part, check my work, do the next, check my work, do the next, check my work, so that I don't have to redo a question if I find and find one mistake. And I found that really helps me save time and helps me to be more effective in figuring out what my mistakes are and then moving on. And and that's really important as well as just the mat, just a matter of taking a look at what the question is asking and figuring out what you're going to do with that answer. What I've had to do is I've, this is actually a, a testament to the learning process of an ADHD kid. Whenever I've taken a test for years and years and years now, I circle keywords. I underline the things that, I, that they're asking me to do. I underline the main quest, part of the question that they're doing. I anno annotate the answer choices. I do all these different things. And once I got onto online tests on my computer, I was like, well, what do I do? I did, I, and I found myself getting so many more questions wrong because I didn't have that ability to like circle things and figure out all that kind of stuff. And that's a process that I'm still going through and I'm still wow. learning. A lot of times I have to write down the question just to do that to my own writing. Um, because if you make sure that you know exactly what the question's asking before you try to answer it, you'll have much, much, much better chances of getting it right or getting even closer to the question, closer to the correct answer, just because you'll be knowing exactly what you're trying to find. And that's what I found to be very helpful. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I learned something. So when I go back, I want to go back to grad school, right? So I'm going to be taking some of that. I took some mental notes. So thank there you, you go. That, Ryan, appreciate it. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit about like, what are you doing as a mentor? Um, why are you a mentor? And we'll talk a little bit about Superpower Consulting because Ryan's a mentor for Superpower Consulting. And for those of you who may not know, um, again, we're a global mentorship firm that works with kids with dyslexia and ADHD. And we match them with someone like Ryan so that your child will have their own personal mentor that has already been through school or going through school, like what Ryan is, right? And we'll help guide them to learn self-advocacy skills and to build confidence with how they learn. Okay, so Ryan, why do you want to be a mentor? And what are you looking forward to most about being a mentor? Proving doubtful kids wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because there are so many kids, especially even when I'm, I, I, I was first introduced to this, this terrible problem when I was tutoring, a lot of kids just doubt themselves. They just assume that they're doing something wrong or they assume that they're, you know, they don't, they don't assume that they can't do something or they assume that they're worse than all the other kids because they've been just made to feel that way. And I, I just want to prove those doubtful kids wrong. I want to prove to them that they are so much better than they know that they've even been able to realize because I've realized everybody is so much better than they're able to realize at when they're this age. And when you have ADHD, that's and just another huge roadblock and dyslexia, just another huge roadblock to realizing what you're able to do and what you can accomplish. And that's my goal. I just want to make kids realize their full potential. And if I can't make them realize their full potential right off the bat, I want to just make sure that they're able to have the confidence to look for it and then realize it once they've found it. I, if they can't realize their full potential, if they can just realize their worth, that that's enough for me. I want them to know that they're worth everything in the world. I want them to have the inner knowledge that they are the most important thing to them. And you might think that sounds self-centered, but these kids deserve it. They deserve to feel like they're the most important thing in their world. And they deserve to put themselves first and to work for themselves because and most of these kids feel like they're not worth anything because they have because they can't read as easily in the beginning of their life or they can't focus as easily and they're just all over the place in the beginning of their life. And that's just not true. They are just as capable, whether, you know, regardless of how they may be in the beginning of their life and even 25, 30, 50 years from then. I, there are people that don't get diagnosed with ADHD until they're like 45. My dad, for example, he didn't get diagnosed until he, my brother, my brother and I got diagnosed and he was like, oh, I wonder where that came from. 
and and he's been having to live with it and it it makes me realize the if i can just do my small part in empowering these kids to realize what they can accomplish and have them be like wow look what i can do that's that's amazing that's such a powerful thing that can be done and i know that it can be done because i've lived through it and i've lived I, i've i've watched it within other people and i know that it's right you are, you know what it is? You're, you're a living testimonial. You know that it's possible because you've lived it. And are we saying that we have the answers? No way. We no. don't. In fact, you know, look, one of our philosophies is that we don't know anything. And for the very reason is why should we? Because it's, we don't know your child's life's full story, right? Mm -hmm. We can know because we've been there. We felt the pain of struggling when reading. We know what that feels like to want to just throw up whenever you pick up a book and read. <laughs> Believe me, it like literally was me. And uh, wow, you know, it's, yeah. how does it make you feel that you have a chance to work with the younger version of yourself? I mean, it means everything to me, you know, just that it's such an, honor to, to be able to impact kids that are just like me and I know exactly what could have helped me back then and and I just every day I just try to do everything that I can to make sure that I can help those kids in that way and I, I find myself I, I just find this to be such a strong passion of mine because of my past with it I'll just be sitting there like you know I'll be driving to school or something and I'll just be brainstorming like how can I get these kids to realize, you know, that how great they are and how, and help them to develop the confidence in, within themselves? Because really confidence is everything. Once they have the confidence, they can accomplish anything more than anyone. Right. That's, that's the key. And that's, that's the biggest problem that comes with dyslexia and ADHD is the lack of confidence because they think, oh, I can't read. How could I ever accomplish anything if I can't even read? And that's just the wrong mindset. Oh, I can't even stay focused on something for three minutes. How can I ever accomplish anything if I can't even focus? That's, the, that's an easy mindset to fall into when you're dealing with these things, especially when you're younger and you don't have any reinforcement of anything else. And if I can just be a role model to a kid and just show them, no, you, you can you and, and even if you are struggling with reading now that doesn't make what you're capable of any any smaller and, and you could be the worst reader in the school you'd be the worst weird reader in the world and you can accomplish so much just by believing in yourself and just be having the pride to speak up for yourself and to know your worth and yeah that's what i strive to do you are you're on fire right now <laughs> you're <laughs> But, uh, you know, can I just acknowledge your share? Because this is a real story. This isn't made up. And it's painful, you know? Like, we're talking about a time of your life that wasn't the best. Yeah. And that adversity, though, it's like you can look at the glass half full or half empty. That adversity of the pain and the struggle of when you were younger, growing up with ADHD. Has made me who I am. Has made you who you are. Yeah. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would never say I'm perfect or like, I, you know, it's made me better than anyone else. That's not the case at all. No, no. But it's made me me and it's made me accept and appreciate me. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't get rid of that for the world. In that kind of awareness, knowing that it's okay to learn differently. Yeah. It's, because who are we comparing different to? Yeah. Who's, who's the normal learner? Who's the normal one? Who <laughs> is normal? In fact, Where are they? I think pretty lame, to be honest. I mean, Albert Einstein had ADHD. I, don't you want to learn like him? I, I think so. The last time <laughs> I checked, time, theory of relativity. Whoa. Oh, see that, that, oh my goodness. It, it, it's so, it's so mind blowing because at what point in, in our social, in our society, did it become not, did it become not okay to learn 
differently. You know, people, you know, the saying people say, oh, great minds think alike. Well, how about great minds think unalike? Great minds think different. They do. They, great minds think differently. Yeah, they, there's a reason why you want can to think. We come up with a shirt? Could, could we actually make that a thing? Should we make shirts that say great minds think differently? I will buy all of them. Like. I will buy all of them. Oh, wait, are we on Facebook Live? Did we just announce this to the world? Oh, okay. Well, new merch, new merch announcement. New merch, okay. Go. I think you heard it first. If you get video testimonial of this, okay. Done. <laughs> Done. My brother's on. What's up, Max? My brother oh. is a, he's in college right now at Northeastern. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Max, welcome up. Um. So yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really mind blowing. And I think once that our kids start to start to realize that, you know, if I know something, my friends don't know, my friends know something that I don't know. Is it really so bad? Is it really so bad? No, now, let me ask you, you're about to go into college whatever you decide, which is really exciting. Yeah. How do you feel? Do you feel ready? Like, oh, no. <laughs> tell me why. Does, does anybody feel ready? I don't think that I'm, I'm alone and not feeling ready to go, you know, to leave the nest. This is going to be the first time living outside of my hometown. This is going to, I'm going to be in a whole new world of harder classes, harder like everything's going to be different and obviously i'm like how am i going to adjust to this but i just need to remind myself i've said that every single time every single year when i went into freshman year i was like how am i going to do this how am i going to get into that? i mean i've been like okay through middle school but like i've kind of been faking it like I'm, i can't keep up with this and i did i overcame and then sophomore year, I went and I was terrified. I was like, I don't know how I can handle this. I, I, I barely like, you know, and I did, I overcame and I, I accomplished, I succeeded. Junior year, same thing, but even more so. I was like, no way I'm getting through this year with like out failing eight classes. And like, you know, I was, I was like, this is going to be a terrifying year. And I overcame and accomplished. I, I find that if you, if you set your sights high and you work hard, you'll surprise yourself with the success you accomplish. Absolutely. Always, you will always surprise yourself. I got a question for you. Okay. And a lot of parents, I feel like are going to relate to this. And if you relate to this, please let me know, because I, I, I think what we've seen in our program, working with all these different kids being in school in 2020 has been a disaster. It's been a mess. And what was it like for you being in school during a pandemic and with all of the uncertainties, having ADHD, relying on consistency in an environment because having ADHD and being adaptable is challenging. So what was it like to be in school during this time? And for parents with kids in this now, this is, I, I want you to listen closely. I don't know what Ryan's about to say, but I have a feeling it's going to be really great. So this is, <laughs> I hope so. no pressure. <laughs> um, it was definitely an adjustment for sure. Um, you know, I, I loved school. I, I still do, but I've always loved school because I love the strict everyday schedule. I go in and I, I do the stuff that I do every day and it gets me going in the morning. It gets me moving because otherwise I have ADHD. I'm very much like all of your sons and daughters with ADHD, you know, the nightmare to try to handle. Yeah, that's me um, <laughs> everywhere all around. And so the, the strict schedule of school really helped me. And once I, once school closed down in March, it was totally different. It was a completely different ball game and trying to just figure out how to keep myself on a strict schedule, make sure that I was still learning because there was not really much enforcement of the learning. You know, there weren't really grades. So that, that's like hard to keep yourself going and stuff. Uh, but as we, like, you know, as we continued to go through it, I just realized that I had to make my own schedule and 
that was a really big you know point of my growth and that I started to make my own schedule I felt like I was really making adult decisions for the first time in my life um obviously I did not do it myself my mom whipped out this like five month calendar for me I think in July and was like all right Ryan let's plan out your next five months and I was like what (laughs) what I'm in the middle of summer but her doing that it once I, I saw that calendar in front of me it I was, I was set. I was, I started working on my, I started putting things into my calendar myself. I started preparing all this kind of stuff. I, I organized myself during a time of disorder, which really, really helped me get my stuff together. And I think that the most important thing is just to, to have yourself, give yourself a schedule, a daily schedule, or even just an hourly schedule that I know that everybody works differently. Uh, Some people have like, you know, year long projects. Some people just have hour long, you know, sections of work. Find what works for you and run with it. And parents, because I doubt that, you know, the young kids are listening to me right now, or if they are, they're probably looking all around like, like us ADHD people are. Hey, look, a butterfly. Um, And, but I, you know, I have parents help your kids find a schedule work with them on it get them excited about that schedule and I know you're like how (laughs) I don't know I don't (laughs) but find what they're excited about and incorporate it I think that's the best advice I can give you know like there might be something that I hate but if you make it Star Wars themed I love it (laughs) and that's just me Um, if your kid loves football football themed whatever it may be I don't know what that means or but give them a schedule you have 20 minutes of this class 20 minutes of this 20 minutes of this and then with the, with the organization of your actual stuff just start it from the beginning and make sure that you stay on top of it because there it's so easy to lose organization when you lose sight of it so if you just dedicate one particular amount of time every day towards just organization in instead of like when you have so much work to do, it's so easy to just get overwhelmed in all the work or so many, you know, all these different things. But if you just have not work time, organization time every day, and that every day seems like, what if you don't need to organize anything that day? That day is set. That time for that day is set for planning organization. Uh, It might sound crazy and very anal, but I promise you, for people like me with ADHD that struggle to keep themselves organized, it does a whole world of difference. Because in from March to March to June, I didn't do that. And my desk was a bomb. It was papers on papers on papers. I'd have calculus next to social studies. It was a mess because I didn't have any organization. This year, this is all my work so far this year. Wow, that's beautiful. And then... I am taking AP physics, which is a nightmare. And this is all my notes for physics this year. I have it all together. I print it. <laughs> I'm twitching. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this stuff will ah! knock you out of your chair. It's horrible. But the only way I've gotten through it is by having printing out the notes every day, annotating them while he lectures. Do those things. Be proactive with your organization. You know you're going to do something in class the next day, print it out the night before and put it in your folder and pack up your backpack the night before so then you can wake up. You wake up too late. Oh, no. Everybody with ADHD does that. You wake up too late. Good thing your backpack's already packed for you so you can just run out the door if you need to. You know what's so funny? My mom has said the same thing when I was a kid. (laughs) How many of you moms have said that to your kids? My parents I, have done that to me all look, the time. This is proof. And I'll tell you, show your kid. This video is going to be recorded after the after this live talk. Show this to your kids. This is living proof that you're right. You're yeah. right. And trust me, if your kid's like not doing it now, neither was I. I've only just started to get into this. And it's taken a long time. But what helped me get into this was the fact that every so often, you know, my mom would have would be like, Ryan, come sit down, let's organize, let's put things together, let's plan things out, let's get everything connected in, in, in chronological order, all these things. And a lot of times I would just sit there and gawk while she was doing all this and be like, yeah, that's from uh, October and it'd be April. 
and I, and I wouldn't know where it's from. Um, and I just through that doing it with her, sitting there with her, and then she'd be like, okay, so how do you want to organize this? And I would be like, I don't know, how should I organize it? And she was like, well, you can organize it by date, you can or organize it by subject, you can organize it by color, all these different ways of organizing. And I was like, can I organize it by subject and date? And I didn't do that at first. It, it was just more of a process of organizing with my mom and keeping myself connected and, and over and on top of my stuff through her helping me through it until it got to a point where I spread my wings and did, started to do it myself. And if that doesn't happen instantly, your kid hits the teens and is still not doing it all by themselves that's fine especially if they have adhd dyslexia any of those things they're more likely to need a little bit more time with that i'm 17 and i'd say that the only time i really started organizing myself is this year and i, I that's fine you know you just keep working on it keep encouraging them keep promoting that on top of everything lifestyle and it helps so much and I didn't think it did because I was doing fine in school while having kind of a messy lifestyle but once I got on top of it 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 totally changed the ball game it made it a lot easier Ron I have to say whenever you say you're 17 I like can't I like refuse to believe it because I <laughs> I, I I swear when I first met you I thought you were like 22 <laughs> okay so question from Canna I think this is a great question. Um, and again, please all don't forget to ask questions. This is a chance for you to talk to someone who your kid is becoming. This is Ryan. Ryan is- please Ask me is, questions, I'd love to. He, he loves it, it, it really fills him up. Okay, Ryan, do you have classroom and or testing accommodations? And are you comfortable advocating for your accommodations at college? That's a great question. Uh, so I never did have accommodations. And then in, I think it was halfway through sophomore year, maybe the beginning of junior year, I got accommodations. I got, so I have time and a half for my tests, which, um, which was good to have that cushion. It really, I really appreciate it. But I went into it thinking, okay, this is a cushion. This is a backstop in case I don't, uh, it don't exceed my, you know, my expectations, I can fall back to this because I do need it um, a lot of times. And so I've tried to use it as little as possible in, and I've, I've made it so that I don't use it too much because I want to, you know, get myself to that higher level. I may be struggling with ADHD and time management, which I, which I have been forever, which makes me move slower and which makes me needing of this time. But I try to get myself so prepared for things. So on top of my stuff, so good at time management that I don't need it. And that works a lot of times if, you know, when I'm really on top of my stuff and a lot of times that falls by the wayside and I have my time and a half to help me there. And I think that it's a good thing for that. But I don't, I don't think that using time and a half to its full extent every time is a goal that, that people with ADHD should have completely understandable if at the beginning of the year if, you know as things go on for the first few years that's the case totally fine everybody has a different learning curve I guess it's sort of I was at an advantageous position because of the fact that I didn't start out with accommodations that it allowed me to you know strive towards regular time and then you'll be so good when you have that extra time and I like that yeah you know, and, and then I have it if I need it, which I do sometimes, especially in classes like physics and calculus, where it's really, really, you know, minutia heavy, hard thing, you know, you have to make sure you don't lose a negative sign here, or like a radical there. And I do use it sometimes. Um, or like if there's a really heavy reading passage from 1854 in a social studies class, I might need that extra time because I find myself, you know, looking up at this, you know, reading the posters on the board because I just can't focus on this boring 1854 passage. And that's fine. That's why I have the time because of those things. But I try to force myself to keep myself on task, keep myself prepared for those tests so that I use, I use that. As, and it takes discipline. Yeah, it takes and a it's lot. it's not discipline. easy. It's not easy. And we still struggle with it sometimes. It's not like you just, it just goes away like this. And I think that is, that is wonderful advice. And I want to ask you this question, Ryan, because 
I found this a lot when I was in college, less in high school, but a lot of kids, when you're in a, a mainstream school and you have friends who don't have accommodations, a lot of them may not understand or think it's unfair that why do you get extra time and they don't? Or why do you take medication? Like, 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 what is it about medication? Like, that's not fair. That's like a competitive edge. So how can we communicate to our friends who don't have learning disabilities to say, hey, I actually need this extra time. I actually need to have um, a note taker, for example. So yeah. what would you say? I would say, don't feel guilty. I remember when I first got extra time, I started feeling guilty because people would like spite me because I had extra time and they thought that I had an advantage because of it. And in after like a small amount of time feeling guilty for having this extra time, I realized, wait, I deserve this extra time. I, I have ADHD. You don't, they could never understand what it's like. And I like to think if I put them in a room with me off my medication, they would be like, give him as much time as he needs. He needs it because they don't, they, they could never really understand what it's like to have that need. Um, they just think, oh, he's been doing this without extra time forever. He just is cheating to get that extra time, you know, and, and that's, and once I realized I'm completely deserving of this extra time and that I shouldn't feel guilty for it, people started to at least respect and appreciate my use of it more. They see that I strive to not use it and they don't necessarily feel as like resentful because I'm using it because they know the fact that I'm proud of my, what I'm able to do. And I'm not ashamed if I have to use my extra time and I'm not, I'm not guilty as if I'm like cheating or getting like an unfair edge above other people because of it. Um, right. and, and, you know, there are always going to be these crazy competitive people that are always like, oh, but he got extra time. And I just ignore them because they have to get a life. And that sounds harsh, but if they're sitting there complaining why I did better than them because I, because I had extra time as opposed to just doing anything bringing any sort of good to the world, then that's their bad. That's their bad. And kids need to remember that and not to get, not, not start to feel down because people are, you know, belly aching over their success because right, that's right. their earned success, not the time and a half or the double time helping them. So much easier to point fingers. So much easier. So much easier to point fingers saying that's not fair. But in reality, I honestly think no matter the accommodation, no matter the accommodations, it's, it's 80 people with ADHD and dyslexia are still at a disadvantage, no matter how much extra time they have, no matter what accommodations they have. And I think that's, that's truly the fact of it. I don't think that's an excuse. I think that no person with ADHD or dyslexia should have that as an excuse for their failure. I think that they should have that as be a, a motivator for their success, but I, I don't think that we're being, you know, given an, a, a an unfair advantage or anything like that. I think anybody that says that is crazy and doesn't know what it's like to have a learning disability. If you're watching this, bookmark this. Seriously, seriously, I really hope you're taking notes on this because this is going to come up. It will come up. If your kids have accommodations when they get older, this type of conversation with their friends will come up. And the difference between our kids having the confidence to not hide when their friends ask them these questions and versus step up and say, you know, this is who I am and I'm not cheating. That takes a lot of strength. Yeah. But it's going to be the difference between whether our kids are going to succeed in school and fail in school. Because yeah. our, look, social pressure is there. Believe me, parents, I mean, I'm not a parent yet, but I can imagine, I mean, with my parents, with parents in my town, that having an LD is like not really talked about. You don't really want to talk about it because of fear of, oh, my kid's not going to make it into this college or into this school or that school. There's a lot of social competition. So there's social pressures. There's social pressures for our kids. So we want our kids to have the 
the strength to stand up and not get mad at their friends. They just don't understand the amount of debates I would get in with my roommate. He's like one of my closest friends, Dylan, if you're watching this, I'm sh- I'm giving you a really big uh, call out right now, but you know, like this is what it was. Like we would get in these debates. Oh, like, like, you know, why is it fair for people to take focusing medicine and those who can't take focusing medicine or those who do get extra time versus don't get extra time? Where is the fairness in that? So these conversations will come up to have to learn how to have those conversations properly. Very important. Very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that they're also important for us because not only can we educate those around us, but I think that those kind of interactions serve as motivators and reminders to us that the that learning disability learning disabilities are not an excuse for our lack of success in comparison to those around us. You know, it's not like I'm not doing as well as everyone around me because I have a learning disability and that's okay. It's I have a learning disability and I want to make myself better to make myself at that same level, despite my learning disability. Cause that would be so awesome to show everybody that even with my learning disability, my disadvantage, I can still compete at their level and I can still accomplish and do great things. That's, that's the mindset that, that really can give you guys, give everybody their superpower. Wow. Wow. Okay. So like, how can people work with you? Like, like, do, like, are you open for mentoring? Like, like, how does that work? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. I am open for business. I, 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 the more I work with kids, the more I want to work with more kids and just to help them. And the, I want to dive into more stories and work with and, and help them grow and help kids, you know, in every way that I can. And if that means two kids, great. If that means two million kids, awesome. I just want to make as much of a difference as possible. And if you are looking for a mentor, with if you want Ryan to work with your kids, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me. You can find us at superpower consulting group on our Facebook page. Our website is currently under construction. So please pardon our appearance. So if you would like us to send a brochure, please let me know and let us know you watch this because we'll give you a free session. Um, if you watch this interview with Ryan, let us know and we'll give you your first free session with Ryan. Okay. Um, email me jake at superpowerconsulting.com. I'll write it in here or just message me directly. We want to change the world and it's going to happen with people like Ryan leaders like Ryan, because Ryan overcame adversity. Now it's his chance to come back and to make sure that no one else has gone through what he's been through and for them to overcome it to the next level. Man, you inspire me so much. You Thank inspire you so me much. so much. You well, too, my friend, really. It's been such an honor to work with you the past oh, few months. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Now let's see, do we have any other questions in the house? Oh, Tracy said, my daughter's new shirt says, underestimate me, that'll be fun. Did I see that right? Underestimate me. Yeah. Cool. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. How you doing, Ryan? Doing well? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? A lot of people watching tonight. Wow. Where are you guys all watching from? I love knowing where people are watching from because it really brings the whole world together. Um, Let's see. Are you on the comments too? How did yeah, you just learn so, um, how to make yourself more understandable? More understandable. Oh, that's a good question. It's, um, I would say that's the hardest process for sure. Because in doing that, you question your whole self-identity. You know, um, it, it's like people don't understand me, but I am who I am am I supposed to change who I am to make people understand me? Uh, that, that question is a dilemma that I've dealt with every, like all the time from when I was younger to now even. And that's really hard 
that's that because that's that's a, a hurtful thing to think about yourself but and that's why I, that's one of the biggest motivators why I want to work with with kids is just no you don't have to change who you are you have to grow and develop who you are and find more about who you are so that you can you can be completely satisfied with who you are and I don't mean that um and I don't mean oh if you get in trouble and you do something you know you call out and you get in trouble or something you know oh I'm not going to change for them what I mean is feel comfortable with who you are but make sure that you follow the world's rules and, and I don't mean like you know conform never conform never conform but abide by rules and that's hard to do because you know a lot of times I defined myself by the crazy calling out acts that I did in middle school and it had to be more of a process of me directing my energy towards better pursuits I've found that if I can take my energy and my ADHD like lifestyle and put that into all different positive pursuits I find myself doing much more good within a in a situation that I might not have always been doing good for example, if I, I, if I put a lot of time and effort into my charity for the homeless that I do, and I do a lot of time and effort and energy into jazz band that I'm doing, and I put a lot of time and effort into sports and working out and running on all these different things, that's where my energy and my excitement and my personality goes. And that allows me to calm myself towards more effectively presenting myself in classroom situations where it might be more easy to be misunderstood by teachers. Totally. Okay. Question. Two more questions. Then we'll go to my final question and then we'll cut it. You ready? Okay. Yeah. I'm having so much fun. Okay. Um, Ryan, this is from Rihanna. I think I'm saying your name, right? Ryan, at what age did you have that light bulb moment of understanding the way your brain works? I, the tough one. Yeah. Um, Do you need a minute to think about it? I think that it was it was it was around eighth grade. Uh, there was a big change between me in middle school and me in high school. I remember going back to my middle school teachers, who I was a nuisance for, and telling them all that I've accomplished, and they were like, "You? Like you were such a bright kid, I know, but like you were just." you were just such a loud kid. They were not necessarily expecting me to have such a turnaround. And I had the turnaround once I realized that my brain, the way that my brain worked. And that, that came with a few different things. That came with some people believing in me. Uh, I remember this is the worst, this is the worst thing ever. Um, but I, it was the last day of eighth grade and the assistant principal, I was in the assistant principal's office for something stupid that I did. And I remember him saying, and I, I did not like him at all. I, I did not. He was, he was like always out to get me. He was mean. He was new. And he was like, and he was, he just sat me down in his office and he was like, Ryan, I'm always very impressed by you. Uh, you've been a nightmare at times, but I really, I'm impressed by you a lot of the time. I can see you being top of your class when you graduate. I can see you being a, a force for good in so many ways, more ways than I think you realize. And him saying that to me, I was like, so this guy that has been making my life miserable for the past few months and has been like, you know, all, just being, you know, a bother to me he sees something in me when there's nothing that he, like I've never done anything to make him see something in me. I, you know, he's only seen the worst of me. And that just made me realize I must be capable of more than I am believing myself to be. And from there, I strove towards finding that, finding what it is that I'm capable of. And I didn't really know what I was doing at first. So I was just like, I'm just going to work hard and do everything. And so I joined like a million clubs in the first week of high school. I was like, study, 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 make sure that I did as, as well as possible. And then I got myself involved in as much as possible. And through doing that, it 
totally opened my world up to to really diving in to because you took advantage I- you took advantage of what the school had to offer if you just go to school and you just do and you're just there you just exist you're not really benefiting from the school you have to use the school as a tool the school itself is a tool yeah wow the school is like a toolbox mm-hmm. and there's all these different tools you can take within the toolbox your your you just school have to be experience. open to see it yeah your school experience is completely dependent upon what you want to get out of it wow i wanted rihanna to get said, a wow, that, rihanna said oh. wow that's powerful that's what she said to you that was after your response that's awesome I'm so glad I was able to help with that. Okay. It, it's well, really. Hey, go ahead. Still lying. What was that? Okay. Now did you click on I think I was just. Hand. Yeah, I was, I was on the live. I was trying to look at the, the chat and then. I know. I, 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 what I do is I have my phone up. So I'll have my phone up. So I watch the live video on my That's phone. On my phone. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. So that. I'm not texting. I'm watching all of you comment okay (laughs) do you wish your learning style would be called a learning difference versus a learning disability from samantha lang thank you that's a good question and i think that it's there's it's important to decipher between learning disability and learning difference i think that i have a learning disability and i have a learning difference i think i have a learning difference because i have a learning disability and i've had to adapt my learning disability is that I'm hyperactive and I'm distractive and I struggle to focus on things for long periods of time when I'm told to, when I'm told to give, like when I'm given a task or something. I'm, I'm the typical ADHD kid. I'm all over the place. I'm crazy. And that's a learning disability in my opinion. Not even a learning disability, just a disability that I struggle to keep myself on task on things. Uh, but I think that that has caused me to have a learning difference. And that learning difference is the equalizing balance effect towards that slight learning disability. And I've embraced that I have that learning disability and I've conquered it with my learning differences. My learning differences allow me to overcome those with little tricks, whether that's visualizing things to remember in my head or you know, making little connections with animals or checking my work every other, you know, every other step or just stopping myself every day and just giving myself time to reflect and think and stop myself and think, what am I doing right now? Is it benefiting me? Is it what I should be doing? Those are little things that have caused me to have a learning difference that, that are my, that d- they define my learning difference. And, wow. and that really counter counterbalances the learning, the learning disability I have. And, and I struggle to call it a learning disability because I don't necessarily see it as I'm disabled in any way. I'm not. And I don't think that any person with learning disabilities has to be disabled. It's sort of just a learning roadblock in a way. It, it makes it a little harder and you have to learn how to adapt. You know, you have a brick in the road. You have to learn how to either climb it or run around it and still stay on, on pace. Right. What you're, what you're, what you don't realize you're tap, you're diving into. It's a very controversial topic in the LD world because is it a learning disability or is it a learning difference and it's not a disability no but if it's a difference who are you comparing different to so what so what are you but you need something to get accommodations so you gotta call it something yeah it's so but the way you word it though was brilliant I thought that was, it was awesome because you have to call it what it is, but you can't let it define you. You got to embrace the thing because look, hyper-focus is a blessing and a curse at the same time, but it is an actual superpower for those with ADHD. It's a real superpower for those with ADHD. And That is something that we have to learn how to harness. Could it be looked at as a form of disability? Well, you know, like, do you lose track of time and not hear people talking around you because you're so honed in on a task? 
I don't necessarily see that as a disability. I see that as a superpower, but you know, everyone has their definitions on things. So um, we did have one last request, um, which is from Erica, Erica. Um, Ryan, as a young child, did you feel like you couldn't keep up? How did you handle that? Let's make yeah. that, yeah, let's, let's get that one answered. And then I'll ask my final question of the night. We'll call it a, call it a wrap. All righty. Uh, yeah, there were times when I was, I was just in a classroom and I was doing something and I was just like, I can't keep up with it. Like I, I can't, I, there were times I just struggled to keep up with what we were doing. I struggled to keep a grasp on everything while, without losing my track train of thought. I struggled to keep, to write everything in time because I was a slow writer. I had OT issues as well, or I would like miss the slide while we were writing. And as it, I, I've had, I did have a lot of, a lot of trouble with keeping up when I was younger and I still do, but the way to overcome that for me was diligence and connection. Diligence in that I work hard during school day and then I go home and I make sure that I fill in all the cracks that I missed. And that wasn't my job when I was younger. I just wanted to go out and play. But it was, it, was, it was great to have a mom there who helped me to do that stuff. You know, she would sit with me through my homework a lot at night, get me through it, help me to make sure that I didn't miss anything important as I was learning all of these new, new topics and stuff through elementary school. And middle school, I started to reach, you know, the point where I tried to start doing things my own. My mom still looked over a lot of my stuff, made sure that I was staying on top of stuff. And but I started to grow a little bit more diligent myself until I have now in high school, my own diligence where I'm working hard for myself. And that was a transition from working hard because I had my mom there helping me through it to working hard for myself because I want to do it. And, and then just, so that's diligence and connection is another big thing. Uh, I think that the most powerful thing for an ADHD student and a dyslexia student to have is a good connection with their teacher. Now that's, a tall order sometimes if you don't have a teacher that's necessarily good for a good connection. Uh, they just don't understand you. I've been misunderstood by a lot of teachers and that's really hard. They don't understand your learning difference and they don't, you know, they, they don't understand how to work with you. But the teachers that do and even the teachers that aren't necessarily familiar with it but are open to trying to have a good connection with a teacher is a powerful, powerful thing. My fourth grade teacher who I was talking about earlier who encouraged my passions I still babysit for her all the time. I'm, I stay in close contact with her. I've, I'm in close contact with so many of my high school teachers, so many of my middle school teachers, and that's through just connecting with them and talking to them, going in early and just talking to them about the subject matter, going in early and just talking to them about life, you know, just getting a, getting a good relationship with my teachers. And that didn't come easy when I was younger because obviously I didn't have that kind of go get ness that I've developed over the years, but through just having a, a passion for connection, I think is important and to talk to the teachers and connect with them. And, you know, nobody can, nobody can help you if you're suffering alone without asking for help. You know, if you can encourage your child to just go to the teacher and just say, hey, I'm struggling right now. I'm having a little bit of a hard time following through, you know, catching up and staying on task, not even staying, just staying on top of the things that we're doing. I'm falling behind. There are very few teachers that won't reach out and help. And that will help to not only get them back on track and on top of things, but also to give them like a good connection, to have a good connection with your teacher. That'll get you one excited to go to school, to have a kid excited to go to school because they enjoy their teacher is so big to get them excited about learning because they enjoy who they're learning it from another good thing. And to be comfortable with the fallbacks that they might have because of their learning differences and the, the the learning process of developing those differences is to have somebody there that they're comfortable to fall back on is very powerful and it's very important you know if if you can have a teacher where you know your kid is so stressed and they're they, they like just want to break down in the middle of a class and they're comfortable talking to their teacher about that that's that's powerful to have someone there and that's what i want to be for these kids but to have a teacher there too that can do that is awesome. And a lot of times that doesn't happen because the teacher's not 
trained to look for those things. But if a kid just reaches out, starts a connection and starts a relationship in the beginning, even if, it, if it's just like a, hey, like whatever it may be, you can even like, if your kid's really shy, you can like give them a script of like what to say and help them memorize it just to give them a nice, nice thing to say so that they don't panic when they talk to them and to give them comfort, you know? Um, that, that helps. I think that helps a lot with the school, the well, school situation. That was a good answer. That was a good answer. Well, I think that really wraps us up. That I, I wanna, I'll end us there because you're coming back on here at some point. We're gonna do what we talked about earlier. I wanna have a Zoom session for all of our parents. We'll invite all of our parents on. We'll bring Ryan on as a host and Ryan will give insights on how our kids can really optimize their school experience from, you know, a test taking perspective. Like how can we be better test takers? What are some good strategies to conquer homework or conquer organization? So what you, I mean, I think that'd be really fun. I think that'd be awesome. I would it, love that. Yeah. I, I think you'd be so good at that. And I feel like that our parents who expressed so much interest in the, uh, on the comments, I don't know if you saw, but when I asked that question, so many people was like, that would be such a great idea. So I think we're going to do that. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I'll, we'll offer that in February. Okay. So um, for those of you watching, follow us at Superpower Consulting Group also, because that's what we'll be posting a lot of different updates um, on uh, our different events that we're having for our mentors like Ryan, who will be leading different workshops um, on their expertise and things that they're really good at. Um, so with that being said, Ryan, man, that was, that was good. You impacted some people today. what did y'all think about Ryan? Come on. what did y'all think about Ryan? Ryan, I, I had a feeling that this was going to be fun, but I didn't think there was going to be this much fun. So do you have any last final thoughts that you want to leave our moms with dads with? I just want to say, I, I totally encourage you the, being able to work with Jake on superpower consulting has been such an honor, such a, such an exciting journey. And I could not encourage you guys to get involved more, uh, to get, to get part of the work, even if it's not with me, Jake's been done an amazing job with this stuff. He's, he's gotten a bunch of amazing mentors and I've been able to see the impact firsthand. And it's so amazing to see. And even if you don't decide to do that, please feel free to reach out to me or Jake. If you just have a quick question for either of us, I'd love to help in any way. Just let me know. You know, I, I, I'm here to help. I want to help the, help the parents here and the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Cause we're a team. That's what it is. We all got each other's backs. That's, that's what, <clears throat> that's what I love about this community is that we have each other's backs. We got your back. And that's, and that's why we're here. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, have a wonderful evening. Happy Monday. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you next Monday. Bye. Take care.